There you go, pancakes for breakfast. I know, that's getting fancy for 6.30 in the morning. Oh, baby, everyone's going to see your cookie monsters. <laughs> I'm in my pyjamas. These are the bollocks. <laughs> Never sleep well before an early start. Never. Melvins? They're on port. There's melvins freaking everywhere. We just keep on, like, motoring through dolphin pods. Never gets old. Never gets old. I love it. But when the weather's perfect like this, then there's nothing better than it being in a well-protected anchorage in a beautiful spot. What a special day. There you go, pancakes for breakfast. I know that's a bit fancy for 6 30 in the morning. Now, where did that honey go, darling? It's probably right in front of you. In fact, I can see it from here. Exactly. <laughs> did you eat those two pancakes in there? I know, I just, I just did one. They're just did one each. I don't know, I just took two things out of that bag. Yeah, they're broken in half. Oh, half <laughs> That's my cue to go upstairs. <laughs> Get dressed and then go upstairs. I'm slowly coming to life. My coffee's starting to kick in, so I'm feeling a little bit more human. Never sleep well before an early start. Never. Anyway, on a brighter note, literally a brighter note, the sun is out. Today, I can feel it. It's going to be a lovely warm day. It's still quite chilly. Nick and I are both in our puffer jackets, but uh, I'm sure they're going to come off fairly soon. Not much of a breeze this morning, a little bit of a puff of air, but uh, what we have now is basically going to be the most wind that we have all day, I believe. Um, it's going to just slowly die off throughout the morning, and then early afternoon, we're going to it's going to fill in from the west. Um, and because we're going northwest, we are hoping to be at our destination before that happens. The nav this morning is a little interesting. I don't think you'll be able to pick it up on the camera, but I can see all these cardinal boys like in the direction that we're going in. I think Nick's hand steering around something right now. Yeah, there's loads of cardinal boys where there's rocks and shoals and other various dangers. And uh, on top of that, there are lots of charted rocks um, around here. So the next 10 miles or so is gonna be, you know, we're gonna have to just pay attention to what we're doing. But the alternative is a massive diversion, which frankly, neither of us fancy doing. Quite a few other boats out this morning, which is nice. Always nice to uh, be one of a few going out first thing in the morning, as the sun's like breaking over the horizon. But today's gonna be a nice little day, I reckon. We're going to a place called Audion. We're actually going, I believe, to an anchorage just outside of Audion. And then tomorrow, we tackle the Ride of Seine. I'll talk to you about the Ride of Seine later. I just think we can want to get the code zero out. Oh, okay. Can you do that now then? Yeah, I need to follow the jib away. We've seen loads of dolphins today, but they just don't want to come and play with us like near the boat. We had a couple before that um, came and played in the bow for like literally, I don't know, 10 seconds. <laughs> so I just, 
I want them to come closer and say hello. In the pod right there. They're just not interested. There's too many boats around here. We're not a novelty. There's boats literally everywhere. Hello. Yes. That's what I'm talking about. Hey, beautiful things. See, they come for like three seconds. <laughs> and then they're like, nah. I think they know that their friends are over there. They want to hurry up and play with their friends instead. There's another pod right there. Come on, dolphins. Come to me. Oh. Hi. 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 Very quick hello. Oh, there's so many today. Dolphins freaking everywhere. We just keep on, like, motoring through dolphin pods. They're not really that interested in us though. Maybe there's lots of fish around here. We've got the fishing line out, so fingers crossed. Yeah, I can see you. Hello. Hi. Hi. Amazing. They've been here for like the last five minutes. Come over here. They're gone. Never gets old. Never gets old. I love it. I was thinking of that telescopic thing, but I can't see it. Yeah, they're gone anyway. Thanks for thanks for thinking of it. What is that? Either let it off the line, or or we eat it. Or we eat it. I personally think we we'll let it off the line. I think we should let it, let it go. If we don't know what it is. It's not big. It's got a big beak on it. We need to look up a fish with a big beak and see what it is. Big beak fish. what fish that was we'll look it up anyway we didn't want to kill a fish and then find out that it's not very good for eating so we do have food so there's no real need for us to be eating a fish unless it's like it's gonna be really good it's been a good day so far it's not a tuna it's not a mackerel see we looked at all these I the last time I got this book out was in the BVI's where we caught up whatever the yeah we caught that fish that turned out to have um, the it's not a wahoo was it a baby wahoo I don't think there are wahoos around here. There's like a, an ocean fish, right? It's not a barracuda. See, all the ones that have a beak are marlins. Gah, fish. Yeah, that. We call that. We either caught that or a needlefish. That was a garfish. Look, that's what we call it. had a little beak on it. Yeah, that's true. Can you eat it? Garfish are perfectly edible, although their green bones put people off. I think it's pretty happy just swimming around. <laughs> Dolphins? They're on port. Hi. I don't think we've ever seen so many dolphins in one day. Like, none of them are particularly interested in us, but nonetheless. I think my lunch is nearly ready. Tell you what, I don't think that I've ever seen so many dolphins in one day, ever. They're just like out of control. They're everywhere. See, uh, you won't be able to see, but over my shoulder, there's a big pod over there. I mean, I haven't even peeked up the camera probably like a third of the time that we've actually seen the dolphins because, you know, 
when they're far away, you can't see them on the camera anyway. Oh, what a day, crazy. Anyway, we are about 10 miles from our destination, which is a place called Audion. And uh, Audion itself is up a little river. And then there's the port, well, I guess the anchorage outside, which is called Saint Saint Abet. And I'm not quite sure yet where we're going to go. I don't know if we're going to anchor outside. I don't know if there's a mooring buoy that's going to be available for us because the mooring buoys there are for small boats mainly. So we might not find one that you know um, where is able to take a 12 meter boat. And Audion itself has a little marina, um, you know, next to the town. It looks really lovely. But you know, do we want to go up? the river to, to stay in a marina when we're just staying for one night. So we'll just suss out the situation when we get there and um, see if there is room to anchor or if there is a mooring boy available and if both those two things come up empty then obviously we'll be back. We'll be going up to the marina. See there's another pot of dolphins right there just as I'm talking to you. I don't think you'll be able to see them. Said a lot of dolphins today. <laughs> Madness, right? Look, they're, they're still there. What a special day. We are motoring. We're motoring into a few knots of wind, but we're also punching tide. So we're only making about four knots at the moment. You know, we're only a few miles away from our destination, so not too much of an issue. And we knew that like the last probably five, 10 miles, we'd have to motor into the wind and, and punch a bit of tide. We kind of knew that in advance. So, <clears throat> you know, it is what it is. No, they're gone. They're I know, but you, you're like- Too late. Too late, too little too late. Coming into an unfamiliar port at the end of a long day of sailing always makes me feel a strange mix of nerves and excitement. I love exploring new places and finding undiscovered gems, but docking up at the end of a day sail can be more difficult than it looks, not that we always make it look easy. Where is tea? Yes. Yeah, I think you're too tight at the bow, babe. <laughs> Come on, you. So if there is an opportunity to just drop the anchor instead, well, we take that option every time. It wasn't clear in our cruising guide how much of this anchorage was taken over by boys for small craft, but when we arrived, it was clear that there was plenty of room in this large bay for everyone. In fact, one of our patrons was also at anchor, so he kindly took some footage of us dropping the hook. So a huge thanks to Gillian for getting these shots for us. Anchor all set. Very nice, very, very calm actually. It's lovely, isn't it? I need to get do it. I want to get a quick tidal range calculation done before we settle down. Yeah. Um, okay. Can you do that? Or do you want me to do it? Um, so high water is at uh, six fifty tonight. Yeah. Low water was at twelve forty four. What's the time? We're mid tide. We're mid tide. Um, low water was one meter and high water is five meters twenty. Five. So so we've got about another two meters to go probably. So we've got we're yeah. fine. Our highly scientific uh, tidal calculations. <laughs> wow, this is so lovely. and it is keeping our batteries topped up and I'm very happy about that. What a beautiful anchorage. It is so nice to be at anchor again. I tell you what, it feels really, really good. I like being in marinas when the weather's not so good, but when the weather's perfect like this, then there's nothing better than it being in a well-protected anchorage in a beautiful spot. It's cold and chilly, but it is gorgeous. And 
bit of news. A uh, guy came around in a rib before looking very official and we were worried that we'd gotten things wrong and that we actually um, had to pay for this anchorage. And I was like, oh, Nick, get your wallet out. I think he's about to come over and ask us for some money. But instead he came over and asked us if we wanted any bread or pastries delivered in the morning. <laughs> and we were like, yes, <laughs> yes we do. Yeah, so we've ordered a baguette and two pastries for breakfast. And I tell you what, that is uh, going to be really nice in the morning because we are, well, we don't have any bread. We were wondering what we're going to do for, for lunch tomorrow and that problem is solved. So it's going to rock up between 8 and 8.30 tomorrow morning. And I think it'll be a good start to the day. Tomorrow we are going around the Rada Seine. So we are here in Audion, right there. And tomorrow we need to go through this little tidal race called the Rada Seine. There's a little body of water between mainland France and the Ile de Seine. And as you can imagine, if you know anything about tidal flows, the tides run really strong through there. So we need to get the timing absolutely spot on. And ideally, we get the tide as it turns to go north. And we are going to spend tomorrow night, all going well, in Camry, which is a lovely little fishing town, I guess. Really lovely beachside town. But first, we need to work out what time we need to get to the Rada Seine because that is absolutely crucial. Oh, baby, everyone's going to see your cookie monsters. I'm docking my pyjamas. So, the way that the tides work is they go up and down the coast and a lot of water moves. The tidal heights, the tidal ranges here are huge. So you're looking at about five metres and all that water has to rush between these two points and it is a very, very narrow point and the, it's pretty dangerous if you get the tides wrong. So if you've got wind over tide or you've got a lot of swell, and we've done this twice, uh, and you've got to get it absolutely at slack water. Otherwise, you know, you get knocked around a little bit anyway, but it's pretty bloody dangerous if you, if you get it wrong. And the weather's bad. And the weather's bad. So we have waited a week for this weather window. And so tomorrow's, <clears throat> we always wait when we get weather window. We wait for two days, day before to let swell die down. And then, then we go the next day. We know the wind's in the right direction tomorrow, and now we've just got to get the timing right. We have to get to the tidal gate five and a half hours after high water breast. Which is, which is slack water. Which is essentially low water, yeah. which is slack. Just yeah. just coming up to low water. Yeah. Now, yes. I need to explain something else that's very important. Don't talk to me about my cookie monster videos. <laughs> these are the bollocks. Do you know what? I bought these for like five bucks in Asda, which is the UK equivalent of Walmart, about... 10 years ago. Mm. And I love them. Go. Anyway, so that's tomorrow morning. Yes. Leave her at 10, get low water, slack, get the tide as it turns north through the Rada Seine, so mm. tomorrow night in Camaray. Mm.